This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 313, How to Get Your Finances in Order in One Hour, by Kaylin Bruce of moneyminiblog.com. And hi again, everybody. I am Dan, your narrator here on Optimal Finance Daily. Hope your Wednesday has been a good one so far. This is, of course, the podcast where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And before we get to today's content from Kaylin, let me remind you that you can show some support for what we're doing here by swinging over to oldpodcast.com slash support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can help us out both financially and otherwise, and anything listed there, we would really appreciate. But for now, let's hear today's post as we optimize your life. How to Get Your Finances in Order in One Hour by Kaylin Bruce of moneyminiblog.com. This is going to be extremely straightforward. I'm going to give you each step to get your finances in order. At the end of one hour, you're going to have a complete overview of your financial situation and be setting goals. I'm going to recommend some tools to use throughout the process, but don't worry, they're all 100% free. Set aside one hour and get started. Step one, get everything in one place. You need to get an overview of your finances. You can go paper, get out a piece of paper and a pen. Write down all of your debt. Separate each one with the individual amount beside it. Write down all of your banking and investment accounts with the value and amount of each. Or you can go digital. Open a free account with personal capital. Connect all of your credit card accounts and loans and connect all of your banking and investment accounts. Step two, check your credit. Sign up for a free account with Credit Sesame. Go to annualcreditreport.com and pull one free report from a credit bureau of your choice. Once you get your report, you'll look for discrepancies. You're done with it for now. If you have revolving credit card debt, you need to switch to cash. Credit cards can be a great tool, but you don't even need to think about the rewards until you're out of credit card debt. Step three, plan your budget. If you go paper, write down your entire net after taxes income. Include all sources. Write down every category you spend money in, like groceries, clothing, etc. Write down a guess of how much you can limit each category to each month. Spend the next 30 days tracking each purchase to get an accurate idea of the amounts. If you go digital for this, sign up for a free account with Good Budget. Put your entire net after taxes income into the website or app. Include all sources. Make a new envelope for each category you'll need, groceries, clothing, etc. Set each envelope to a guesstimated amount based on what you think you spent. Use the program to track each purchase for the next 30 days to get an accurate budget. For more on budgeting, check out our complete guide to budgeting. Step four, create a debt payment plan. You don't need to hire a professional debt relief company. If you're in so much debt that you don't even know where to start and you're facing legal trouble, consult a lawyer. But a debt relief company can't do anything for you that you can't do for yourself. Figure out the total amount of debt you owe. This should be easy since you copied it all down above. If you have some debt with high interest rates, consider a balance transfer to save on interest. Utilize the debt snowball or the debt avalanche to start paying down your debt fast. Step five, calculate your emergency fund. Create a plan to save $1,000 as soon as possible. A temporary side job may be in order. Figure out how much money you would need to cover living expenses for six months. Think about the fact that you would go to a bare bones budget if an emergency struck. Include an amount in your budget to save each month until your emergency fund is fully funded. Step six, reevaluate your insurance. Start with car insurance. Make sure you aren't paying for anything you don't need, like rental car insurance. Look at your car insurance and see if you can raise your deductible to lower your rate. Shop around to see if there's a better or cheaper company. USAA is my choice, hands down. For home insurance, make sure you have enough coverage, but not way more than you need. Make sure you're covered from every likely event, like fires, floods, and earthquakes. See if you can find a better or cheaper company. Again, USAA is my choice for all insurance. For health insurance, do you have it? If not, will you pay a penalty this year for not having it? Look into it. And shop around to find the best available plan. Plans change all the time. Something may be cheaper now. Life insurance. If you don't have life insurance, determine if you need it. Does anyone depend on your income? If you do have life insurance, reread your policy to make sure all the possible deaths are covered. Make sure you have enough coverage to support what you need to support if something happens. And look into your options. 
Term may work better for you, but whole life works better in some cases. Other insurance. If you or your spouse is disabled, consider long-term disability insurance. Depending on the total value of assets you own, you may want to consider an umbrella policy. If you own your own business, make sure you have appropriate coverage and re-examine your policies. If you're in a tight spot financially and working a dangerous job, consider short-term disability insurance. Step seven, plan for retirement. If your employer does a 401k or equatable fund match, contribute at least enough to get the match. For your other retirement investing, decide whether your company's plan or your own plan will be better. Once you make a decision, set a goal to start contributing once your consumer debt is paid off. If you decide to invest for retirement on your own, educate yourself thoroughly on investing. Live within your means and come back to this plan once a year. If you do, you'll be ahead of the majority. With our free online guides to investing, budgeting, saving money, and paying off debt, nothing is stopping you. You just listened to the post titled How to Get Your Finances in Order in One Hour by Kaylin Bruce of moneyminiblog.com. And this is one of those posts that you might want to save and come back to so you can follow along and go through each step slowly. It will definitely pay off for you. And before we go, it would be great if you could come by oldpodcast.com slash support and just check out some different ways that you could support the show. Most of them are totally free, like sharing the podcast with a friend and writing a rating and review. Again, we would really appreciate it. And the link is oldpodcast.com slash support. And that's it for today. Thanks so much for being here and listening. I will see you in the Thursday show tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.